Hello, I'm going to run a DINA model using R. I'm going to describe the model while going over the R code as well as the output produced by the package I plan to run. So DINA, that stands for Deterministic Input Noisy and Gate. It's a very popular type of CDM. CDMs are special cases of latent class models with parameters restricted by some Q matrix. They're often used to generate profiles on exam these just by using responses to a test. So let's jump into it. Right here, I created a Q matrix. It's a 15 by three. Uh, each row represents an item and each column represents the attribute. So I just ran it here. I'm gonna set it as a data frame. And then I'm going to name each column. Now, now that it's in the global environment, let's look into it. It's so here what it shows is uh, each row is an item. Uh, for example, item one requires attributes A1, A2, and A3. So now I'm going to generate a data set just randomly. This becomes somewhat problematic uh, for the DINA model. But um, I will go over that uh, after it ran. So I'm just going to set C just in case I want to uh, generate the same data set again. Um, it's going to be uh, it basically responses to a test for 100 examinees uh, for 15 items. And it's going to be binary, uh, one representing the student answered the item correctly, zero representing they answered it it incorrectly and if you, you can look at it so each row represents the examinee and all the columns represents uh, the items and their 15 items so the to run the DINA model you have to install the package CDM uh, I already installed it so I'll just call it right here Now, the DINA model, so what it does is that for each item, it'll group up the all the examinees into these two groups. One group for examinees who possess all the required skills or attributes for that item. And the other group is examinees who are missing at least one of the required attributes for that item. And the parameters estimated is the slipping and guess. So for that group that has all the required skills for that item, it's the probability, uh, the slip parameters uh, estimated, and the, it's the probability of getting the item wrong given that you have all the uh, required um, attributes for that item. And guessing is for the examinees who are missing at least one of the required attributes. What's the probability of them getting the item uh, correct, um, given that they are missing one of those required attributes. And the, and again, the whole purpose of the DINA model is just to create these sort of profiles on each examinee, uh, meaning we get to know whether each examinee mastered uh, each attribute. This is a little different from past uh, psychometric models, which uh, now instead of um, looking at one continuous attribute um, and scaling examinees on that, we're looking at a series of these discrete latent attributes. So here is the DINA model. I'm calling um, the data set I generated, as well as the Q matrix, and I'm setting the rule to DINA uh, using this DIN function. And I'm setting the model name to mod one. And I'm going to run it, and the model converged. So to pull all the uh, information, uh, mo most of the information, you, you can just use summary mod one here. And let's look through all the information that we get from this. So first, First, uh, you can see that they are about, the first few things it gives us is the iterations, about 127 uh, 
uh, iterations. Uh, the number of item parameters and skill parameters, uh, you'll always know the number of parameters just based on the uh, Q matrix. So there are two parameters, like I said before, slip and guessing estimated for each item. So it's the number of items times two is, is the number of item parameters. And the skill class parameters is pretty much two to the K, K equal to the number of attributes. In this case, there are three. So there are eight uh, uh, different combination of those three attributes. Minus, uh, but you also have to minus one for the uh, null uh, class. Uh, they'll they'll call you can call each combination. Uh, it's been called latent class, uh, latent attribute vectors, or knowledge dates. Next bit of information is the uh, fit indices. Now um, is the item parameters that are estimated for each of the fifteen items. It's guessing um, and the uh, slip parameters. This is the probability of guessing, the probability of slip. So, as I mentioned before, I use randomly simulated data. So, if you have high probabilities or uh, numbers uh, that are close to one um, for guessing, it's, this would mean uh, you know get that there's a lot of guessing for that item. And there's there's, there's some rules of thumb, like if it's uh, 0.4 or higher, 0.5 or higher, um, that that would mean it's somewhat of a bad item. As well as slip, uh, if if it's really close to one, that means uh, this item it basically is causing a lot of examinees to guess and slip. And as you can see, because I use randomly generated data, you have a lot large uh, probabilities for these parameters uh, for a number of these items. Now, in the next column is the item discrimination index. So it's pretty much uh, the probability of slipping should be lower than the probability of guessing. Uh, this sort of makes some intuitive sense, um, given just think of all the times uh, you've, you know, how many times do you, would you guess an item correctly, given that you don't know it? Um, and think of all the times you've actually slipped like you knew the item. That, that should, um, slipping sh shouldn't happen as frequently uh, uh, as you know, guessing and getting it uh, correctly. Um, given that uh, something, an item that's close to one here uh, is pretty much good. Negative would mean it's uh, it shows really bad discrimination. Uh, and and the next that that's what it stands for. Uh, item discrimination index. Next one is R root mean square error. This is like the item fit, how well the each item fits uh, the model. And what you're looking for is values of 0.05 or lower. And a lot of them don't meet that, as you can see. 0.02, uh, that does meet it. This Though this is somewhat close, a lot of the other ones don't. These uh, items 4, 5, and 6 right here. So just from this, you can see there's a number of items that students are guessing a lot on. Um, you're getting a lot of negatives on the item discrimination index, which you shouldn't be getting. Uh, and you want these values to be close to one, but a lot of them aren't. And uh, a, a lot of the items don't really fit the model well. So, and this is, uh, this is why you shouldn't randomly simulate data. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to use something a little different from, from a lot of the popular data sets used. Even in the package, they actually provide you a way to simulate your own data set. But I figured I, it'd be worth it to show a bad case and, and what you don't want to see. Now, the, uh, the next bit of summary information is the marginal skill probabilities. So the, this is pretty much among all the examinees, um, what's the proportion uh, that mastered uh, each attribute? And you can see here that 90.7 mastered uh, A1. So A1, A2, a large portion of the uh, examinees um, mastered these uh, skills. 
and and I uh, I'm going back and forth from them as attributes and skills. A lot oftentimes uh, what's being measured uh, are skills, but these models can be used for other types of latent attributes as well. Now it's uh, for this summer information is the correlations. Here it gives you a good sense of uh, correlations between each of the attributes. If you see something very high, it could mean that the attributes are dependent on one another, or or it can also you can go over this with a content expert. It could also mean that one of the attributes may not be needed. Like if you have two attributes and they're highly correlated, let's say 0.9, then you know you could just do away with one of the attributes. Here, there, there's no really strong rule of thumbs, but here it's you should also expect some degree of correlation as well between the attributes since they should all be correlated to some in some ways some higher order continuous variable that that's um, trying to be measured but um, it's worth inspecting each item if you have a very very high uh, correlation uh, uh, I'm sorry it's worth it to inspect the uh, two attributes further if there's a high correlation between these two attributes. And then finally is skill pattern probabilities. This is for each combination of the uh, attributes, the three attributes. It's the pretty much like the proportion of examinees who have uh, each, each uh, of the possible combinations. And as you can see here, 57% have all three, 111, meaning they've mastered A1, A2, and A3. So that's pretty much uh, a lot of the summary information. You can plot this information by just plot mod 1 right here and running it. And uh, you can hit enter to provide the information. Oops, I made a mistake. That's not good. Uh, so let me just get that. All right. So yeah, to see the remaining, uh, it's three plots that are produced. Um, I just wanted to go over it one by one. So here is, it shows the slip and, not the slip, the guessing probabilities, as well as the non-slip, which is uh, just one minus the slip. And it gives you a good visualization of what we what I just reviewed earlier. What you want is really small gray bars or slow guessing, uh, low guessing uh, probabilities, and high red bars. Uh, and as you can see, it's it, you're definitely not getting a lot of that for this. Let me pretty much hit enter again to get the next plot. These are the marginal probabilities for each of the attributes. Uh, the portion, uh, the the proportion of examinees that mastered each one that reviewed earlier, and the third plot. I just hit the cursor and I'm hitting enter, and it's the uh, and again this is the pretty much proportion of examinees that mastered uh, that that possess each of these. Uh, I apologize for you going back and forth between the names, uh, but you can call these knowledge dates or attribute classes. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, but, oh yeah, I forgot. So one, one of the important things is the actual classification. It's now you want to see the actual profile that the model generated on the examinees. And that's done through the function irt.factor.scores. Um, and we're selecting the maximum likelihood estimation. And this right here is just added because I just want to, because it's not going to show all 100, it's going to be truncated. So I'm just going to add this and say only show the first 10. So let's run it. So each row right here uh, is the examinee, and he, um, and this is pretty much their attribute class or knowledge date. Uh, so examinee number one mastered attribute one, two, and three. 
And over here, like uh, examine eight, only mastered uh, the first, uh, I'm sorry, mastered attribute A1 and A3, but did not master uh, A2. And, and that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you, and let me know uh, in the comments if you have any questions or if I got anything wrong. Thank you.